Okay, back at the bench. And uh, now that we're done with the uh, the lug cutter, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it up, put it away. So here you can kind of better see the uh, the pointed end of this. That, uh, that's pointing up into the barrel. So um, it does leave a tiny little mark on the bottom of your barrel, but you know it's on the inside and un underneath your barrel, so you know, I wouldn't wouldn't worry about it too much. It ain't, it ain't you're gonna kill your gun, all right? So um, yeah, it looks pretty clean. Um, I'm I'm definitely satisfied with that. And uh, the next thing we got to do now is put our link back in, and uh, and and test the fit again. So. Hopefully this thing doesn't make a fight me uh, again. Getting this thing put back in. And we'll get this link put back in. Me and my fat fingers. If you got big fingers, working with this link pin is probably one of the worst things you're ever going to do. Let me see if I can get this tapped in. Started. kind of crooked but it is wanting to start there we go okay here's my link I'm gonna go back over to the vise and squish this thing in and I will be right back all right many swear words later we got that link in okay so what we got to do now is confirm that our uh, our barrel feet are cut correctly and make any adjustments if we need to make some adjustments. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, and if you have Dicom or uh, any of the layout fluid, uh, go ahead and use that. Uh, like I've said before, I use Sharpie. Uh, red, red Sharpie also works good for this, but I like blue. My eyes are blue. So we mark the feet all along here. And uh, all we're looking for is a rub pattern. Um, and you can put this in the gun and, and do this if you want, or you can just uh, do it like I'm going to do it. Um, take your slide stop, put it in, and you're going to work this, uh, the full range of motion. Okay. So, oh, man, that's not going at all. Okay. So we'll, uh, I'll straddle the camera here and show you. Okay, so we're back with a close-up here. And uh, you can kind of see after cutting them, uh, there's a little bit of a corner um, that's left. Right here. A little bit of an edge of a corner. And that's kind of that should be kind of your first indicator um, that that's not going to work. Um, so what we just did was insert the slide stop from here and push forward and it stops right there. Okay. And the same thing if we push the link all the way down. Okay, and insert the link. And try to come back up. It stops again at the same spot. And we can see the rub pattern is right here across that corner. So what we need to do is take our needle files and some sandpaper and, uh, and file that down. Now you can leave uh, the link pin in if you want. If uh, you hear... Uh, adventurous um, or you can take it out and do it uh, just accept that you're going to be taking that link in and out uh, quite a bit so I am going to actually opt to leave that link pin in I've done this a lot so I know how to be really careful with it and and honestly if you put a couple file marks on the back side of this link right here you're not doing it in any harm okay unless you start like gouging into it and filing into it then you're gonna weaken it um, but yeah if you just scratch the back of it a couple times you're fine um, so that's how I'm going to do it. So I'll, I will come out of this super close in shot and we will start working on the lower legs here. Okay. So, uh, like I said, you need, you need to get uh, those needle files out. Um, this is why I like to have uh, a big assortment of them because there's typically just kind of one for each job. So this is what I call a leaf file. I'm sure somebody else has a proper name for it. Um, I, I like to use this for, uh, for this job. So. Um, you, you can put the barrel on a vise. I'm just going to do it by hand so I, I can show you uh, right here. 
and all I'm doing is I, I see the wear, uh, the wear mark uh, right here on the corners and I'm just gonna start filing away at them. Now be, be careful not to go crazy and start scratching up and filing off um, the rest of this here because that is potentially just fine and we don't want to damage that. So I am putting a slight radius uh, filing motion into this as I do this. Okay, and uh, since this file cuts uh, pretty darn good, that's gonna be it for that. And uh, since I'm leaving the link in, I'm being awfully careful to, uh, to not file into it. That's kind of awkward, I'm gonna have to do this one. Learn to file uh, left-handed if you're right-handed. And uh, yeah, learn, learn to file with both hands. It'll come in handy when you're filing on little things like this. And I'm not worried about filing into the side of the link because there's no teeth on the side of this file. So, so this is a pretty handy file. Uh, if you can see all the blue on it, uh, you can tell that I, I, I use this file uh, quite a bit. And like I said, I, I've had these little Nicholson needle files for, gosh, uh, man, you know, probably seven, eight, maybe ten years, something like that. And, uh, and they still cut great. So uh, they, they are made in Mexico uh, for the ones who want stuff made in America. Sorry, they are made in Mexico. But they, they work, you know. Just like if you notice my mill, okay, my, my mill and my lathe uh, are, are imports. But, you know, when, uh, when something works, it, it just works. So, okay, so I've done a little bit of filing on them. Uh, I can see that the corner that I was filing on is now a small radius. So I'm just going to put the Sharpie back on. Sharpie everything back up. Okay. Put the slide stop back in and... Uh, We'll, we'll see where the wear is now. Okay, so it's stopping in the same spot as it was before. And we just go back at it. And this is just kind of one of those slow processes that takes patience. So now it says it's stopped uh, on the top of that corner. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, to get at with the file. And I may actually end up having to take this barrel out just because of the positioning of it. Yeah, you know what? We're, we're gonna take uh, I'm gonna take this link out. And I know I'm gonna regret it because we have to this thing is being a pain in the butt to get back in. But, oh well. Oh. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, like I said, nice, uh, nice thing about that bench block just captures that pin right there. So now I'm gonna come across here uh, with my needle file. I'm gonna come across both surfaces evenly. Uh, another important thing is to uh, File these surfaces evenly. You want them nice and flat and straight across. So don't use a super thin, super cheap needle file on this. Uh, th this one is a needle file, but it's pretty stiff, it's pretty rigid. It's not going to bend and flex as I press into my uh, piece to file on it. Um, if, if you haven't done a whole lot of filing on small parts, you know, you don't really need to press really hard with the file. You just kind of let the file cut as you put light pressure and, uh, and go across it. Uh, a file only cuts in one direction, if you didn't know. Uh, that's why you only see me going forward with it. So files are cut with direction uh, to them. And they only cut going forward. So sometimes when you see people filing really heavy and really fast, you'll hear, you know, it'll sound different when the files are going both ways. So when, usually when they're pulling back, they're still dragging the, the file across the, the piece. But they're not putting any pressure down, so it sounds different. Kind of like a saw. You know, when you hear people sawing wood, uh, they're they're only cutting in one direction. So just like a file. Okay, file only cuts in one direction. Okay. 
So I filed on this a little bit and we'll go ahead and sharpie it up. And we'll see if this, uh, if I've kind of figured this pin out, if I can get this back in without having to go away and come back again. I think I got this pin figured out here. I'll even be dangerous and show you guys this. If you guys got big fingers, man, you're going to hate this pen. Okay. Alright, this thing is learning. It's going in there nice and straight now. Alright, let's get you kind of lined up. And as a AVE says, contact. All right. Okay. So we're in like sin. And uh, we'll go in from here. Oh, there we go, folks. And yeah, that is really nice. Okay. So as I go, I'm seeing slight wear marks across it, and that's good. That's very good. And I'm going to rub this back and forth across the back of the feet. This is going to tell me uh, what kind of contact I have in it with the back of the feet, and that's important because when it's installed in the gun in this orientation, all right, the slide stop will be like this. And your gun is down linking, okay, being reloaded, and the breech, the slide's going to come forward and press the gun up. The slide stop against the bottom of your uh, your feet, the the barrel feet, okay, the the lower lugs. That's what's stopping the forward motion. That's what's arresting the slide as it goes back forward. So there's a lot of force being put on your slide stop right at this moment, okay. And there's in turn a lot of force also being put into your lower lugs. That's why a lot of people prefer the uh, the Wilson Nolan cut and the Clark Para ramp cut um, because there's a lot more meat back here to stop the gun. Not that our standard government uh, doesn't work, okay, and that's not why this uh, style of uh, feed ramp was designed at all, but it is an added benefit to it, okay. Um, you got a lot more meat to stop and you know, you're not worried about snapping the bottom of your legs off, okay. But I'm checking the wear in the contact and I'm checking it and I'm seeing wear marks all the way across okay so that I, I know that when I stop when the gun stops okay that all the way across is stopping that both sides are stopping the uh, the slide okay not just one side so it's nice and even okay my, my link moves freely so that's good and uh, the next thing to do is put this thing in the gun and to kind of put it back together and see how she works. So, okay. all right, so we got a one piece there, link up. Okay. Excuse me while I fight this gun for a second. Any of you guys with uh, one piece guide rods know exactly the pain I'm going through right now. You can get this thing lined up. Just perfect. There we go. This one doesn't find me too bad. The, the other one I got a full length guide rod in, man. That, that thing fights me at every turn. Now, even though this slide stop moves freely, we may still have some adjustments to do um, because we now have to ensure that the uh, barrel, actually let's do that first. Well, we already got it in there. We're going to find out. What I would normally do in this case is pin it back in the gun and look at the feed ramp. But I already know that from the last uh, barrel that this, this feed ramp is cut to spec, is cut properly. So we can go ahead and put this gun back together. Alright. 
There we go. Oh, come on. Oh man, something's really. Oh, I, I bet I know what it, this is. This thing is locked in there tight. Oh, whew. Yeah, I think I know what this is. Okay, so this is another part of. bowl barrel fitting okay when you're using a uh, reverse when you're using a one, one piece guide rod and you have the hat style um, plug in there spring plug I'll take this thing apart and show you okay so sorry about that um, we're back and uh, the reason our slide was not going fully into battery, so I believe, uh, was this hat style uh, reverse plug, okay, or spring plug. Uh, so what I've done is I've coated it in Sharpie, and I've coated the bottom of the barrel in Sharpie, and I'm gonna put it back together, and we're gonna see if that's the binding point. And if so, it's just a matter of fitting this curved surface, okay, uh, to accept this barrel, and then we'll be good. Now, if I'm wrong, it's not gonna show, um, any any wear marks and we're back to square one so So this is just kind of a lesson for you guys out there who want to do a, uh, a bull barrel with a hat style spring plug. Or reverse plug. Okay, so I'm just gonna let it go. Don't worry, it's wood. Wood's not hurting the steel barrel. And I'm just gonna do this a couple times. Oh, we'll see now it's going. Huh? But now it doesn't wanna come out. The other thing that could be causing this, which I seriously doubt though, would be uh, the lower lugs need a little bit more material moved right at the end. Um, but I, I, I just, I, I seriously doubt that. So I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get a sneak preview on here. Let me see if I can put a little bit more sharp over here. Ow! <sighs> so you guys can see just that little bit right there. It's an uh, eighth of an inch maybe. And I am almost positive. Yeah, so I can, I can kind of see some I can kind of see some wear marks on the barrel already. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take it apart. And this is the, the, the joy of, uh, of building your own gun. Figuring out all the little kinks and quirks with all the, uh, the parts. So if you didn't uh, bring a bucket of patience with you when, uh, when doing this, you might wanna go back to the store and get some. So not just kind of racking the gun, I'm, again, I'm looking at the lower lugs because we still got a bunch of Sharpie on them and I'm looking for the wear pattern. Um, I don't see any hard hitting on it to indicate that the lower lugs is what's stopping the, uh, 
uh, the slide from going all the way into battery, but I do see light even wear across all uh, surfaces, so that's good. That's what I like to see. And, uh, we'll just pull this guy out. Oh yeah, there we go. So all the Sharpie is gone in the middle of this thing. And, uh, wow, okay. So let's get... Come on, Link Cooperate. There we go. Let's get this guy out. Okay, so... Hard to see. Okay, but you can see all the Sharpie wear all in there. Okay, so it's definitely this. So what I'll do to fit this is, I, and I'm not going to show this to you, is I'm going to take some uh, 400 grit sandpaper. I'm going to wrap it around the edge of the barrel here. And I'm just going to rub it. Okay. I'm just going to rub like this to keep the contour of the barrel into this part. And we're just going to, we're just going to work back and forth. Okay. And I can even see some Sharpie going all the way back, indicating to me that this is rubbing across the barrel all the way down here. So we'll, we'll do that. Okay, my uh, battery's about to die here. I gotta switch batteries anyway. So I'll, I'll be back when that's all fit. All right, so we got this figured out now. Um, after uh, a while of fiddling around with this, um, figured out that it was actually the, uh, the upper lugs and the top of the barrel that was giving us some fitment issues. Um, so I was fitting the uh, this, this part right here. Um, and at first this was helping out. So there definitely was, uh, some, some unneeded pressure, uh, from the bottom of the, uh, the spring plug, the, the reverse plug here. Uh, but after a while it, it, it stopped, uh, you know, putting, uh, fit, fitting this stopped relieving some of the pressure. Now we still have contact on the bottom of this, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, so I took a different look at it, and uh, some of the troubleshooting steps that I was taking was to uh, go ahead and pin this in, in the frame, uh, just the barrel by itself. So go ahead and pin this with the, uh, the slide stop and take it through its range of motion to see if there's any binding. Um, that was perfectly fine. There was no binding there. Uh, so next, put the barrel in the slide without the recoil uh, assembly in there and do the same thing, pin it to the frame and then uh, rack the slide to see if there's any binding, which there was. So from there, just kind of color everything up and see uh, where you're hitting. And so I've, I've already kind of filed on the lug a little bit. Um, I stopped so I could start filming this because I realized I was going without filming. Um, there was a little bit of a hardware spot uh, right here in the uh, the recoil in the upper lug, and um, it was pretty you know well defined. It was a small little point where some where you know contact was obviously being made, and the sharpie was being pushed away. Uh, if you look up here, you'll also see some of that sharpie uh, worn away. But that is not from something digging in and pushing it away. This is likely from uh, the top of the slide, uh, the inside of the slide, uh, just kind of breezing over it uh, as the uh, slide comes back and the barrel unlocks. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. That's normal. Um, but the the hard spot where metal hat on metal contact was obvious. Uh, that I went ahead and filed down and got my and used the the locking lug file for what it was actually intended to do. So I'm gonna file on this a little bit more. Um, and again, that same kind of radius filing motion that I was showing you guys earlier is the same motion that you wanna take here. Um, place it directly in, uh, in between. And we're just gonna take some strokes. And uh, you don't wanna to go too bananas with this. You know, we're, we're fitting. You know, obviously you do want to remove some material. You'll want to remove some metal. But uh, you don't want to go completely, you know, full bore into this. So a good couple, uh, you know, long, long strokes in there. And uh, you can feel when you kind of wipe the, the file down how much material you, uh, you removed. Uh, the other place we got some rubbing was up here on top of the barrel. 
so I, I didn't notice this at first, uh, but after a while of kind of getting in, uh, you know, real close, I could see the scratching on the metal. And it was in this kind of like a V, V-shaped uh, pattern, and I'd never seen this before. Um, so I, I colored it up with Sharpie, and I uh, kept rocking the slide back and forth. Um, and yeah, sure enough, there was uh, some, some pretty hard wear patterns right there. So um, there's two options. You know, I, I can either, you know, take some sandpaper and, you know, the, there's a corresponding Sharpie mark in, you know, inside the, uh, the slide. And I could go in here with some sandpaper and, and finagle around in there and, and try to get that down. But the inside of this is Cerakote and I don't want to mess with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a strip of sandpaper and I'm going to put this in my bench vise and just kind of shoe shine uh, over the top here to, to remove a little bit of material. And uh, we'll, I'm going to do that and, uh, off camera and then I'm, we're going to color it back up. We're going to come back, color this all up and put it back in and uh, see if that helped at all and see if it, uh, you know, see if we get some repeat wear patterns and we'll, we'll go at it again. So we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, as you can see, uh, we did some sanding on here with uh, some 320 grit. Uh, not too much. I didn't want to go go uh, too crazy with it. Um, but we uh, resharpied up. Well, let's... Resharpie that area, okay, and then we'll color this up again. Now all I'm looking for is the same thing as before. I'm just, I'm looking for that wear pattern. Um, I'm, I'm looking to see if it changes, looking to see if it uh, stays the same, if it moves. Um... You know, I, I, you know, I have absolutely zero expectations of, of this being solved and this thing all of a sudden working flawlessly now. Um, you know, fitting, fitting stuff like this takes time. Um, and, and I know that, so. It's just a trial and error process and, uh, you know, you, you do it and do it again and fix it and do it and fix it until, uh, until it's right. So, uh, like I mentioned before, you know, if uh, if you didn't bring a bucket of patience with you to uh, to build one of these things, you know, you're uh, you're doing the wrong project. So, we're still we're still not locking up. So, uh, you know, I, I can slam it forward and get it to lock up. Uh, but that's not what I want. But, yep. There we go. Okay, so we're still getting... Uh, we're still getting a wear pattern up here up front. And I'm going to do this a few more times. Okay, we'll take it back apart and take a look. So I already know we're still contacting up on the front of the barrel, uh, but I also want to see the uh, the locking lug that we filed. So looking back at the locking lug uh, that we filed, there's a little bit of contact just in that one little spot over here. So I'm going to give that a quick file. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, we're still, we're still getting uh, some contact up front, up here. So, back over to the vise with some sandpaper, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, ready for round three. I uh, got it marked up. Do this a little bit more. Sharpie's really not showing up on this barrel, probably because there's... 
I'm using WD-40 as a little bit of a cutting oil for the uh, sandpaper so it doesn't uh, load up when uh, when you go to sand the metal. So sometimes when you do that, the, uh, the WD-40 gets kind of embedded into the metal and uh, the ink doesn't want to stick to it. So, okay. Put this back on and we'll go for number three. Spend a little bit more time sanding the, uh, the front of the barrel this time. So, may have taken off a little bit more material than the time before. So, hopefully this gets us uh, some sort of discernible result. Okay. Well, we're definitely not going into battery all the Same old, same old. Okay. Well, I don't see any hard fitting really on the, uh, I don't see any, you know, thing on the upper legs here. It just kind of seems to be focused on uh, the barrel up here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm not, I'm not going to keep dragging you along through this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this off camera. When we get it fit and working again, we'll come back and I'll show you the finished product. All right. Yeah. Back here and uh, we, we got this barrel fit up. And first off, I'm going to say um, I don't know everything about the 1911 and I'm not afraid to say it. And uh, I am quite embarrassed, uh, but I'm filming this for you guys. And I'm going to put it on film and I'm going to show you guys that uh, even people who do this for a living make some mistakes and overlook things from time to time. So we now have the barrel fit in there and it's going back and forth. Uh, I overlooked some troubleshooting steps because I made a couple of assumptions. I assumed that since this barrel was fit and this barrel worked just fine, that if I took the link off of this barrel, it would be the correct link for this barrel in the same gun. I was wrong and I was dead wrong. Um, I, got, I was getting pretty frustrated uh, with why this thing would not fit. And uh, so I just took a break and I went and sat down and did, did some thinking and uh, it just kind of came to me like, no kidding, dude. Uh, your your link is too long or you haven't cut your feet uh, right yet. So it was actually a combination of both. Um, so I'm going to go through the troubleshooting steps that I should have gone through uh, from the beginning with you guys right now. So if you ever encounter a problem like this fitting uh, a barrel into your own gun, you guys will uh, see this and you'll know what to do. Okay. So what was going on, if you guys... <clears throat> Uh, bear with me here is when I went to go When the slide tried to go back into battery. It was stopping about an eighth of an inch short Okay, so it was stopping short it was not going fully into battery What I should have immediately done is taking the gun all the way apart taking the link out of the barrel and Just put the slide in the barrel in the gun well, Let me actually do this for you guys <laughs> Just like this with no link. Okay, just the barrel and the slide. Put that on the frame and put the slide stop in. What I should have done is this right here and just pushed it forward. Okay, to make to see and, and what this test does, okay, with no link. All we're we're testing right now is I, I don't care about lock up or the down link yet. All we're testing is that if the feet are cut correctly okay for this slide stop with this slide with this barrel with this frame now it is okay it's 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 done correctly now okay it was not before 
and I was doing everything backwards because I was assuming that that link was the correct link. Okay, now, if that is all said good and correct, what you need to do now, once you get the lugs cut correctly, you need to find the right link for the barrel. And in the perfect ideal world, you want a link length. And I can sit here and talk to you about links for a long, 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 long time. Um, but the ideal link will have the slide stop, okay, riding along the feet, okay, at, at pretty much all times, with maybe a couple thousandths of clearance, okay. It will also allow for the barrel to downlink and have the uh, your feed ramp contact uh, the feed ramp in the barrel, okay, the vertical impact surface uh, correctly, and also in the uh, uplink or in battery position have proper engagement with the upper lug. So we're talking 43 thousandths at a minimum uh, or more. Okay, that is the correct barrel link. Um, you don't always get everything you want. Sometimes uh, your engagement might be a little short. It might be a little. Uh, you know, you might have to make some modifications to your frame. Okay, you, you don't always get it perfect. Sometimes the uh, the barrel feet are cut correctly. <coughs> Must be. Um, but the proper link is longer than uh, what will allow you to, uh, you know, have the uh, the slide stop ride on the barrel feet. Okay, um, and and I'm going to get into that because. I, I have a feeling we're about to be right in that situation. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go back to the original link length, uh, which was the number three. And we're going to put this in the, uh, in the barrel and we're going to test it. Okay. I, I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. Uh, but I, I could I could be wrong. I could be proven dead wrong right now. Um, and if I was, I would be kind of happy to be honest with you. Uh, where'd that link go? I just had it. That's number four. Oh, yeah, number three. Okay. Uh, I would be exceedingly happy if I was proven wrong right here. Um, I don't think I'm going to though. Um, now, if the link is too long, and I think that this is going to be too long, so we're going to see it here. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I won't explain. I'll, I'll wait to see if it actually happens. Okay. So we got a link in. Oh, don't fight me today. Come on. Okay, so we got the link installed in the barrel, barrel in the slide, slide going on the frame. And then we're going to pin it like we normally would during assembly. And we will see if this thing will push right back into battery or not. Now, if it's too long, the slides are going to stop. And there we go. Okay. The slide has stopped hard. The same eighth of an inch. I could. Oh, man. Yep. Okay. So, we know it's not the barrel feet. Okay. At this point, it's got to be the link length. Okay. We, we've adjusted the upper lugs. Okay, we've cut the upper lugs. I know I'm not bottoming out on the, on the upper lugs. So it's got to be the link length. Now, from here, since you, since you were a good 1911 builder and you have the complete set of links, you can go down in size, checking uh, to see which one is going to be the proper uh, link. Where are my dang punches at? Ha. 
Found it. It was hiding under my uh, my pack of links. Okay. So let's replace this link. Okay. So instead of number three, let's not lose our pin. Oh man, that would have been a disaster. I almost lost my uh, my link pin to the abyss of the garage. Okay, so let's go down to, uh, let's just go one step down. We'll try number two. Actually had to dig into a different set of links to get this one. Um, and if you don't have any idea what size your link is, but you know you need longer or shorter, just take your calipers and measure uh, this distance right here in the middle, okay, in between the two holes. And then just measure against uh, the other uh, the other links you have to find out which one you need. And I've actually had to do this with a Barstow barrel. Um, if if you want a free link, uh, buy a Barstow barrel. Uh, they will come with a link pinned in it already. Uh, but they do not tell you what link it is, and the link, uh, the last Barstow barrel I fit for a guy uh, was an absolute tack driver once I got the gun done. I'll tell you what, that gun shoots lights out. Uh, but the link was mega short. Like shorter than any other link I had ever seen. Uh, okay. So here we go, we're pinned in with a number two link now, and same test, we're just going to push forward, oh, right there. Okay. That's it, number two link. Okay. So, uh, it just goes to show that not every barrel is going to be the same, okay. Um, go through the proper troubleshooting procedures. Uh, go through the proper steps and never make an assumption like I just did. Uh, yes, I charge people money for, for what I just did. Um, yes, I overlook things every now and then. Uh, no, I'm, I'm certainly not perfect, uh, and, and I'm certainly uh, not uh, above the world enough to, uh, to not admit that, all right? Um, so just let that be uh, uh, you know, a lesson for all you new builders out there. Um, I've, I've said it twice already. I'll say it again. You know, If you didn't bring a bucket of patience with you, uh, you know, go back out to Home Depot and, and see if they got one on sale. Um, let's uh, let's put this gun all the way together. So let's get this. Let's get our recoil guy in there. So now this all to be a test to see if uh, I, I fit this down enough because this this was uh, rubbing. Um, Which I think we did. We're still making contact with it on the bottom, which is good because that provides us our good solid lockup in the muzzle. But I don't want to create a jam. All right. Cooperate link. Line up. <laughs> All right, so uh, the last thing we got to do now, um, well, I'll probably end up having to make a new front sight for it. I made this front sight because um, the point of impact is probably gonna gonna shift. Um, KKM bar barrels come short chambered. Uh, so I need to finish the uh, the chambering on this barrel. Uh, what I did, if if that made you go, uh, if that thing is short chambered, how in the world did you do your firing pin alignment? Very easy. You take a your your case and you cut it. You you cut it in half so it'll fit in the back, and, and then you do it like that. So uh, 
you'll you'll get, you'll see me chamber this uh, this barrel in, in the lathe, okay, uh, in the uh, ants in the pants jig. Um, but not not right now. Uh, I got to kind of set this aside and get back to uh, to our commander build. Um, but that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking with me uh, through that very painful process. Um, that is how you do a proper match fit. Uh, you know, match match barrel fitting. Okay, uh, we went through all the math involved uh, for properly measuring your barrel hood, uh, properly fitting your barrel hood, uh, using the lug cutting kit, and properly cutting your lugs and troubleshooting uh, troubleshooting your lower lugs, troubleshooting your links, and fitting your upper lugs. So the four points of a barrel. We, we just covered we, we covered the muzzle uh, up front with the uh, the reverse plug up here we had to fit that okay we, we took a tiny little we took about a thousandth off the circumference of the barrel up here as well so one uh, two we fit the hood correctly we have an excellent excellent hood fit uh, three we fit our upper uh, upper lugs we did a little bit of a very small amount of filing on the upper lugs and then we also fit the lower lugs we cut those troubleshot those refiled and uh, smoothed out our lower lugs and we also troubleshot our uh, barrel link uh, length and we got to the proper length so that was a whole lot and this is quite a long video I hope this helps somebody out uh, again, learn from my mistake on this one. Learn from my uh, assumption um, on this one to never assume and always do proper uh, troubleshooting procedures. So uh, thanks again, guys. And uh, the next video will uh, not be as long, will not be as tedious, I promise. Um, and we will get back to our commander and uh, making that commander a super awesome handgun. Thanks again, guys. And always remember, uh, reload and let freedom ring.